What is up, fellas? Okay, so today, um, it is, what day is it? It's Thursday, and I just was in the filming mood, but I didn't really know what to film. I, I mean, I can go outside, but I just wanted to do, like, a little sit-down chat video. I think it's been a while. Um, and I've just been thinking, like, I want to post more on this channel. I think because I've accumulated a certain amount of followers, I just get, like, ner I don't, it's not like I get nervous posting, but I think I just get a little bit more, like, self-conscious about uh, my content. When in reality, the reason I started this channel was just to document my life and post what I want, so, um, I just need to really embrace that, practice what I preach, and so I'm gonna start doing that. That's why, obviously, you guys have seen a lot of food videos lately, because that's what I've been into, especially during this quarantine, is just making my food look pretty, like, posting on my food Instagram, giving you guys recipes, because I know a lot of people are cooking right now. That's why I've been doing that. You guys have been loving it, which I really love, because obviously when people like what I'm passionate about, like, that, it means the world to me. So I'm glad that you guys are liking that. Also, the tier list videos are very polarizing, but... I definitely want to keep posting those too. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched the tier list videos, I recommend if you want to be a little bit triggered. So if you guys are in the, like that mood, you know. But today I went on um, my food Instagram. I'm also drinking a cold brew. Cheers. Um, today I went on my food Instagram and asked you guys to just ask me some questions. Like let's just chat. <laughs> that was kind of cringe. So I only asked it eight minutes ago, but. <laughs> Here we are already filming, so let's see who was quick to get in some questions. I said anything goes, so this is gonna be a wild Q&A. Tips on making friends as an adult. So obviously I lived in a bunch of different cities and I have not had the friends that I've had until I moved to Portland. I would say when I was in California I didn't have very many friends and I would say when I lived in Atlanta I had zero friends pretty much. So <laughs> I now have a good friend group here in Portland and it's just because I kind of I moved to a city where I knew I was gonna know people and then also I've done like a lot of like the friends that I did hang out with at the start when I first moved here um, they just had mutual friends and then now we kind of have a big friend group so what I would recommend is also like finding people that maybe like you don't know that well but you know that live in the city like I reached out to my friend Maddie Myers who I mean we knew each other but we weren't like great friends but before I even moved to Portland I was like oh how do you like living there blah 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 just like making a connection and she was really nice and just introduced me to all of her friends so I think it's just kind of going out on a limb and reaching out to people maybe that you don't know that well but know that live in the city and have like common interests because a lot of my friends are runners too so we have a similar background yeah just kind of like yoloing I mean I think a lot of people are trying to make friends out after college it's pretty hard so don't beat yourself up um just don't worry about embarrassing yourself and just shoot your shot shoot your friendship shot I should say Okay, kind of a similar question, and something I want to start talking about definitely more. Um, I had a Zoom call with Judy Pendergast's uh, high school team yesterday. Hello to you guys if you guys are watching. And we talked a lot about like life after college and kind of finding your identity outside of your sport. And I know a lot of you guys are runners, but one thing that I've really, really tried to do and I've like struggled with after college is finding my identity outside of running. And yes, like running will always have a special part of my heart, but I... I want to expand my life outside of that. Like I've never really dived into any sort of interests outside of running just because running has been my entire life. Like in high school and college, it was running, running, running. And right now in my life, like running just isn't as fulfilling as it used to be. So what I've been trying to do is just, I don't know, think about other things that I'm interested in. Um, obviously you guys know on this channel, I've tried a bunch of different other types of working out. <laughs> Um, and I still I still love running but cycling right now has been one of my go-to's just because I find it really fun I have a spin bike over there in my apartment It's just really fun to like get my body moving having no pressure and just doing it for fun I guess going back to the question um, life after college she said especially after sports It's just kind of like tapping into things that you might be interested in and just trying out a bunch of different things There's no shame in that, you know when you're figuring out what your identity is outside of sports, like it's hard to figure out something that you like to do as much, I guess, as uh, your sport that you've been playing your whole life. So I would just say tapping into different things that you enjoy doing, maybe that's art for you. For me, that's like food photography, food, like baking recipes, having a social life, I guess, is something I missed out on in college. So just the combination of like a lot of different things. It's just a lot of trial and error. So. 
don't beat yourself up, don't be hard on yourself. What was your favorite meet ever? And then she said track, cross, college youth, etc. So I guess we're going all of um, my running career. I would say, oh, this is such a hard one. I would say any of the Brooks PR meets were unreal. I had the best time there. Or NXN with my team was really fun too, but I think Brooks VR tops it. Like there was something about that meet, and especially the earlier years when it was like the first beginning stages. Like I went to the second ever Brooks PR, and then the third and fourth, but this, the first two that I went to were indoors, and <laughs> I was so out of shape. Like I was, <laughs> everyone was training for indoors, like everyone up from the East Coast came. I was from the West Coast and I went with three of my high school teammates and we just had the best time, like tearing it up. It's something unlike anything else. So even going to NXN with the team, it's still like a team meet, but then Brooks PR is everyone's an individual, but it was fun getting like so much free gear in high school and racing against the best, even though I was out of shape, I didn't even care because the experience was so fun. Um, and there's always like little like high school dramas. <laughs> I feel like no one really talks about it, but there's always like a high school drama going on between the top high school runners, I would say. So at least it was back then. And it was always so interesting um, just to witness it. <laughs> I don't know if I can go into more detail. I probably won't about that. Tips to stay sane during quarantine. This is a good question. Um, I think the biggest thing that I, well, I'm struggling. I will say I'm definitely struggling, even though this isn't that different than my normal day to day lifestyle. I think just being alone and not even having the ability to go to a coffee shop is kind of driving me um, insane. But the biggest thing I would recommend is establishing a good morning routine, waking up and going to bed at the same time every day. Cause that really establishes some normalcy to your day to day. And it just makes you feel more productive. Because when you're going to bed at 2 and waking up at 10 or later, like, you probably just, you probably wake up and you don't feel like you're going to have the most productive day. So, something that I haven't done very well but want to is that. And my ideal routine is getting up at 7 and going to bed at, like, 11. But I know being indoors is hard all day long, so <laughs> it's been a little bit of a challenge. But I would say that really, really helps. What made your food Instagram successful? So I get asked for like tips on how to grow an Instagram account a lot. And there's not really like any secret tips. It's kind of just probably what you already think. I have been posting on my food Instagram every single day for about three years now. So I would say that is the biggest thing. It's consistency. So it's, it's harder than people think. Like running an Instagram account is actually a lot of work and I don't think people really understand that but posting every day and like trying to come up with content every day is difficult but I find it really fun and challenging like it's just a fun little challenge it's like oh what am I gonna post today and making your food look good obviously um, another thing is engaging with other creators and this is something that I definitely want to do more of in the food scene because I feel like I'm really tapped into like the runner scene but I kind of want to grow the community like with food Instagrammers, there's a whole different community there. I know I've like become friends with some people, but I definitely want to engage more with other food creators, so that's definitely a help. And using hashtags. This isn't something I really do on my personal account, just because I don't really care to grow my personal account. Um, but my food Instagram, like I just want to reach as many people as I can, so I use hashtags in every post. I have a set of hashtags in my notes that I just post on every post in the comments right after I post it and it actually helps a lot. So there's no secret tips. I never buy followers because that does not work and it is a waste of money. I never ask people for shout outs. It's just organic growth and the grind posting every day. Another tip I have is kind of having your own aesthetic. So when I first started, oh my gosh, I just look back on some of my old pictures. So I, you guys probably know if you're loyal, one crazy foodie follower, I had the white background in every single one of my pictures and it would stress me out if it wasn't perfectly white but that's kind of how I established myself I think is the person with the white background so <laughs> I did that for a very long time probably a year and a half 
and then I got to the point where I was like, okay, this is not very sustainable because you can't find a white background everywhere. So then I kind of just branched out and I just have like my own aesthetic, I guess. And I think every food Instagrammer does. If you like look on various um, popular food Instagram accounts, like everyone just has their own specific aesthetic. So just kind of find what you like and what works for you and what you think looks good. Are you a natural blonde? Yes, I am. My roots definitely get darker when I live in Portland just because there's not as much sun sunshine and my hair like turned gray in college <laughs> during the winter i look back and my hair was not like very dark it kind of is right now though too in college how often did you do abs okay i am afraid to admit this but i would say probably five times a year <laughs> i'm so bad like there are definitely certain things that I could have done to make myself a better runner, but I was too lazy, you know? I did a lot of stuff. I dedicated my life to the sport. But some, but things that I slacked on were abs, and I would say, like, strength and hip mobility, and a little bit of lifting. Like, those are definitely things that I did not put 100% effort into. I would say the training, the sleep, the nutrition, um, time management, like, everything else, 100%. But there are definitely some things that I slacked on, and abs were one of them. I'm not saying you should do that at all, but I'm just saying the truth, okay? <laughs> have you ever had a boyfriend? Um, yes, I have, if you guys have watched this channel. Um, yes, I've had a boyfriend. I've had a few, but I am very, very picky. So I would much rather be with someone that I like genuinely like, and it takes a lot of... It takes a lot of time for me to like someone. Um, and I have just been single for the majority of my life, to be honest. So I'm very like confident in being alone and just kind of being my own independent person. So right now I'm single, but am I looking to change that? Not really, but if something comes along, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Did you think of moving anywhere else besides for Portland? Um, so yes. Obviously, I've moved quite a few times and with what I do like the world was kind of my oyster So it was kind of stressful figuring out where I wanted to move next But I know in college. I've always loved Portland. It was always a place that I found interesting I think Portland just had a strong running community and I definitely like knew people that lived here So that was what drew me to here, but I was thinking about New York, which I, I couldn't have moved there unless I had an opportunity waiting for me because I don't think I would ever just be able to move and be like, okay, what now um, to New York City just because of the lifestyle and the expenses. I also thought about LA, but again, I was like, why why would I move there? Like I just I know a few people there, but there's nothing that really drew me there. I've thought about Austin, Texas, just because I really like the city of Austin. But again, I didn't I don't really know that many people that live there and it, there wasn't any opportunities there, so I thought Portland had the best opportunities for what I'm kind of interested in, and I knew the most people that lived here, so that's why I picked Portland. Someone asked what my biggest insecurities are. Um, okay. I don't think, I, I mean, I've kind of talked about it on this channel, but I would, just listing them out, I would say, <laughs> this is kind of weird to talk about. Um, I've just been anxious about, like, what I'm going to do next, and I think that just kind of makes me insecure. Like, people ask, what am I doing? Like, a lot of the time I just don't really know, Especially right now during quarantine, like I just don't really know what the next move for me is. So that just kind of makes me feel anxious a lot of the time. Another part of the time is just like what I do for work. I, it's not, it doesn't really embarrass me that much, but sometimes I just feel like awkward. Sometimes I feel like I can just come off annoying on my Instagram, especially if the person doesn't really know me. And I don't know, that just kind of makes me feel uncomfortable sometimes, but obviously I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> but it's just like a weird occupation to have to try to like explain to someone and explain what I do. Physical insecurities, um, sometimes I think my lips are a little bit too small, but I'm not gonna go get lip fillers. <laughs> also, obviously I've struggled with my body image a lot. Obviously you guys know about that. Um, but that's something I've really like come to terms with and just over the years, like, when I first started my YouTube channel, I was so insecure about that. It would keep me up at night. I hated it when people made comments about it because I think where I was at was just unsustainable for me. So I think that made me more insecure. I don't really know, but 
So when people make comments, it kind of just doesn't really impact me anymore, which I'm really thankful for, but it's taken a long time to get here. But I think I've gotten to a place where I'm happy with myself and just who I am as a person. And so when people make comments about my outward appearance, like I just don't really care anymore because I know who I am and other people's comments just don't get to me to the level of what they used to. I'm not saying that it doesn't like hurt when I receive a hate message because it does like a little bit. It's like, ooh, but then I just move past it and I don't dwell on it, which is something I would have done in the past. All right, I'm gonna do one more because this video is already long. What is your biggest regret towards running? This is actually a good question. Um, I would say not believing in myself when I was fit. I just think back on my running career, especially in college, and I just didn't believe in myself enough. I was so, I was so like down on myself and I never thought I was fit enough. That is a big thing. I think a lot of college runners deal with it where I just never thought I was at the right place of fitness. I can probably count on my fingers the amount of times where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm fit. Like I, and now I look back and I was fit almost 100% of the time when I was in college, so. And it's just frustrating to look back on and like realize that my mentality I think hindered me from some really really good performances Like I would just go into a race and just not be as confident as I think it could have been And I think now if I like went back in time and if I had the confidence that I do now in myself I think I would have raced a lot better just if I believed in myself a little bit more But it's not something I can really change and it's not something I would have been able to tell until now when I've like learned how to be confident in myself. I mean, I've always been pretty confident in myself, but I think just confident in my fitness level. Yeah, I can't, I couldn't really go back and change that if I wanted to, but if you're constantly telling yourself that you're not fit and you're working out every day and you're eating healthy, you're doing everything right, then believe in yourself because I'm sure you're gonna look back and be like, I am fit and you were fit and you are fit. So, okay, that is gonna end this Q&A. I hope you guys liked it. I'm gonna try to post more. I'm not gonna do a daily vlog because I think that's a little excessive, especially in quarantine, but I just wanna post more and kind of connect with you guys more and I really appreciate your guys' support. <laughs> Thank you guys for um, watching this YouTube video, subscribing. I've been really active on my food Instagram, at One Crazy Foodie. It's just kind of like a lifestyle page now for me. I post a lot more than food. So if you wanna stay, if you wanna stay in touch via Instagram, follow me there. If you have any other video ideas too that you wanna see that might not be running related, just because I feel like I've done a lot of running videos and I kinda wanna branch out, leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, fellas.